afternoon, everyone. Not much heat generated today, although there has been some sunshine. The big story will be what happens tomorrow. Let's begin our coverage with meteorologist Nathan Hopper, who's here with what's going on right now. Nathan? Yeah, thanks, Mike. We're starting to see already some clouds moving in, some snow showers moving in ahead of our Friday clipper. But when that clipper moves through tomorrow, blizzard conditions expected. And that's why we've raised a first alert weather day for tomorrow because the wind, the fresh snow that we're expecting here overnight into tomorrow morning is all going to culminate into just some tough travel for us for our Friday. So notice the pink uh, colors here. That's a blizzard warning. We're expecting that light snowfall, say one to two inches up to three inches, plus wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. So it does not going to take much snow with wind gusts to 60 to cause those blizzard conditions here across the Red River Valley into the Devil's Lake Basin. Notice the orange here. That's a high wind warning. Not expecting any new snow down there, but still expecting us to 60 miles per hour in areas like uh, Lamore and Dickey County. And so still expecting some impacts from those gusty winds there as well. Then surrounding those two areas, we've got winter weather advisories for uh, the B Bemidji area up toward Lake of the Woods. We're expecting some snow up to one to three inches plus wind gusts to 45. Notice the wind gust is not as strong. Uh, in this area, thanks to some trees out there in northern Minnesota. Then for our friends in the Southern Valley, light snow with wind gusts to 50 and then a very light snow for Jamestown, but still expecting gusts to 60 there. So even with again a couple of snowflakes there, 60 mile per hour winds can really cause some trouble. Already seeing some clouds making their way in some snow showers already there into Lamore and Dickey County near the Ellendale Oaks Lamore areas. But Mike, of course, we've got a lot to talk about for Friday, so we'll break down that timing and impacts here in a few minutes. Important information. Thanks. We have new information on a story we've been following all day. It's a train derailment in Becker County. It happened just before nine this morning. Right now, BNSF is investigating the cause as the cleanup continues. What we know is that a train derailed causing a parked train in another lane to also go off the tracks. Officials say some of the cars were carrying lithium batteries or petroleum. They don't believe the materials pose any safety hazards or concerns to the public, but they did evacuate those living near the derailment as a precaution. Deputies on the scene expect cleanup to take quite some time. Both tracks remain shut down. New at four, authorities are investigating the cause of a fire that destroyed a house near Lisbon, North Dakota. It happened early this morning around seven miles south and four miles east of Lisbon. Crews saw heavy smoke when they arrived, with fire venting through the roof after arrival. Everyone was able to get out safely. Law enforcement agencies across North Dakota participated in the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over enforcement campaign. From December 17th through January 31st, 121 alcohol or drug-related citations were issued. Now that includes 70 driving under the influence arrests, 19 arrests for or citations for minor in consumption, minor in possession and open container, and 20 drug-related arrests. The campaign was part of Vision Zero. Funeral services were held in Minneapolis today for 22-year-old Amir Locke, who was shot and killed by police earlier this month during a no-knock raid. Adam Duxter reports from Minneapolis. Red roses draped the white casket of Amir Locke as friends and family said a final farewell. I stand here today as a father that's torn, a father that's hurt. The 22-year-old black man was shot and killed in Minneapolis earlier this month during a no-knock raid in the middle of the night at the apartment of Locke's cousin. His aunt told the mourners it's time to end the controversial tactics. No-knock warrants have taken more lives than they have saved. And usually those lives are people of color. Locke's family and supporters also want the Minneapolis police to be held accountable. When you go to bed at night, I want you to see his face. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to see his face. Amir was not guilty of anything but being young and black in America. Police say they were looking for evidence in connection with a homicide investigation involving Locke's cousin and that the no-knock warrant was necessary because, quote, it enables the officers to execute the warrant more safely. Minnesota has launched an investigation into the deadly shooting. Adam Duxter, CBS News, Minneapolis. The officer who shot Locke is on administrative leave. Locke's cousin was arrested and faces second-degree murder charges. 
The former Brooklyn Center police officer found guilty of manslaughter for killing Dante Wright will find out her sentence tomorrow morning. Kim Potter said she confused her handgun for her taser when she shot and killed Wright during a traffic stop last April. Potter testified during her trial that she didn't want to hurt anybody and that she was sorry it happened. State prosecutors have apparently backed away asking for a longer than usual sentence. The United States Senate has advanced a measure to help avoid a government shutdown. The House passed it with a bipartisan vote last week. The bill would finance agencies through March 11th. For now, the government is still working with spending approved late in President Trump's term as negotiators work on a compromise bill to fund the government through September 30th. The United States is disputing Russian claims that the Kremlin has withdrawn forces from the border with Ukraine. A senior Biden administration official says as many as 7,000 more troops may have joined the buildup. The accusation comes as the White House warns Russia it is reaching to provide a pretext for a possible invasion. President Biden says he believes that an attack on Ukraine could be possible in the next several days. We have reason to believe that they are engaged in a false flag operation. They have an excuse to go in. Every indication we have is they're prepared to go into Ukraine, attack Ukraine. The president also says he has no plans to call Putin. The Russian response letter is en route, but he has yet to read it. Great Lakes harbors and tributary rivers will get a $1 billion boost to cleanup efforts thanks to a recent infrastructure plan. Officials say they've identified 22 sites that need the help the most. Cleanup efforts began in 2010 under the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, and they plan to finish the project by 2030. The Great Lakes hold about one-fifth of the world's fresh surface water and provide drinking water to about 40 million people. The federal government has set funds aside to clean up abandoned oil wells like those that can be seen across western North Dakota's landscape. Hundreds of thousands of so-called orphan oil and gas wells can be found in half the United States. They may not have been cleaned up properly by previous operators. The Biden administration announced just over $1 billion available to states to start the cleanup and stop any emissions that may seep into air or local groundwater. Hundreds of truckers are still clogging the streets of Canada's capital city in a protest against COVID-19 restrictions that are bracing for a possible police crackdown. Police were pouring into the downtown area of Ottawa. Protesters have been there for nearly three weeks in a demonstration that has shaken Canada's reputation for civility and rule following. Work crews have begun erecting fences outside Parliament and police are handing out warnings, but so far there have been no signs of officers attempting to quell the protest. If they're going to go unlawfully and un under unlawful orders, I'm not voluntarily off accepting their offer to contract. I'm going to put my arms around my fellow brethren and we're going to stay in home Canada. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau addressed Parliament this morning not far from the demonstrators as officers delivered a third round of warnings to vehicle officers. As we start to head down the home stretch of the 2022 Winter Olympics, let's check uh, the Olympic medal count. Norway currently leading with overall 29 medals, ROC 26, Germany 22. The United States has 21, now that includes eight gold, eight silver and five bronze. Then it's Canada, Austria and Japan. Olympic coverage will continue tonight on KVLY. Minnesota's first free parks day of 2022 is coming up this weekend. On Saturday, you won't need a vehicle permit to enter any of the state's 75 park or recreation areas. The free pass does not include any rentals or camping fees. Several state parks will offer special programs on Saturday like prizes and snowshoeing. The other free park days in 2022 are April 23rd, June 11th, and November 25th. Want to know what's planned for Fargo's Island Park? Well, the Park Board will be hosting an open house in a couple of hours to go over concepts that are being considered. It's a chance for you to learn and comment on the ideas. The master plan will shape park improvements over the next 20 years and beyond. The presentation begins at 6 tonight and the open house is afterwards until 8 o'clock. It'll be held at the Robert D. Johnson Recreation Center. Look for coverage tonight on Valley News Live at 10. Fargo police have arrested a man on multiple charges, accused of stealing a vehicle and crashing it. Dustin Powell is facing multiple charges of theft and breaking into vehicles. 
Fargo police were called to a house on the 1200 block of 4th Avenue North after a woman saw a man trying to open a door to her house. When police arrived, another man said his car had been stolen. Police say Powell stole a vehicle, backed into a dumpster, and crashed into a garbage truck. Once Powell was arrested, police also discovered a woman's wallet, ID, and jewelry. He's being held in the Cass County Jail.